So I've been talking a lot lately about Marvel fatigue and I did a whole video about why I chose not to watch Moon Knight and uh, Miss Marvel when they first came out. Now I still have them on the docket but you know I made a video being real honest with all you guys about how I felt about Marvel and that Hawkeye kind of burned me out. Uh, it, it was fine when it was three movies a year but now Marvel's doing three movies a year plus whatever Sony's putting out plus the Disney Plus show. So I was sent this um, this image here in my Discord server. If you want to join the Discord server, head over to my main channel, Geekdom101, and click the Join button. And there you can see a video pop up and follow the instructions on how you can join the Discord. You have to become a member at Tier 2 at least, minimum Tier 2, and you'll get to join. But somebody sent me this, and I thought I'd be compelled to do a video on it. It's written by somebody named Joshua Watt 27 and, and he says, I love the MCU, but I think so each subsequent I think each subsequent phase has grown progressively larger since the last in an even shorter time frame. And I'm concerned that at what point audience fatigue will kick in. This is what I've been talking about. Now, I'm not the only one who's suffering from this. I've seen some of your comments and I've talked to some of my friends who are also fatigued. Some of them did watch Moon Knight and some of them did watch Miss Marvel. But at the time those shows were airing, I was watching other stuff and working on other projects. So I didn't have time to make for those shows. And maybe it cost me some views here on World of Geekdom as they were airing. But I still just didn't feel like doing it. You know what I mean? Um, but I'm going to go ahead and read what, what else he wrote because I've talked about this, but it's kind of cool to have somebody else um, give their two cents and give their experiences. So he says, phase one, six projects over five years. Phase two, six projects over three years. That's true. Of course, phase one, they were just starting out. Much easier to produce films now, especially with the way that the machine that Disney is. Phase 3, 11 projects over 3 years. That is true. Phase 3 felt longer than it actually was. Phase 3 was only 3 years, but it felt longer. And it was from 2017, 2018, and 2019. Um, they were putting out 3 movies a year, though. Actually, technically, when you think about it, it's, it's, it's about 4 years, because it's also 20... Civil War came out in 2016, right? Am I correct on that? I believe so. So that'd be four years. So this is not exactly right. He goes phase four, 16 projects over two years. The 14th, which is, he's not exactly right. That That's incorrect. Um, that's actually 16 projects over three years because phase four began. And remember, the pandemic did postpone a lot of this, but phase four began in 2000. 19 no 2020 i'm sorry um well okay yes it started in 2020 but it was supposed to start in 2020 but black widow got pushed back to 2021 and then wandavision came out in 2021 so uh no actually it is two two years because it's ending this year so i'm sorry i'm thinking back to i forgot about the pandemic postponing things for a year so yeah that's correct 16 projects over two years 2021 starting with wandavision going through until black panther this year uh, Black Panther 2. He goes on to say, Phase 5 currently has 12 projects listed over two years, but we know Deadpool 3 is happening and Sony will have their Spidey films among other potential additions. He's also right because I feel like they haven't announced everything yet. There's still more things they could add to this. And then also Phase 6 only has like three movies. He goes on to say, I think a problem with there being so much in such a short time frame is that things aren't left to linger. Like, there was hardly any breathing room between Moon Knight, Doctor Strange, Miss Marvel, and Thor. I agree. That's why I had to skip on two of those, because I just didn't have enough time to process, and I had other things going on. There's a lot to keep track of, and it risks losing the attention of the casual fans, which I agree, to keep track of. And anecdotally, I've already seen that with people I know, and so have I. A lot of casuals have skipped on certain movies. Like, Eternals didn't get the best reviews. People have skipped it. I have friends who haven't even seen Black Widow yet. You know, and, and a lot of it's because, you know, the character died in Endgame, so what's the point? That's how a lot of folks see it. And even though it is an interesting story, it's not one that's really hooking people the way that I guess they want it to hook people, or at least people don't care that much about those two films. Um... I think Doctor Strange, Spider-Man No Way Home, and Thor, they all had lots of anticipation, mostly because of the multiverse saga, but I also feel like 
people were picking and choosing. Because ultimately, when it comes to Disney Plus shows, the stuff they're building up might not come into play until down the road. Falcon and Winter Soldier is meant to give us, you know, I guess, foreshadowing or, or, or you know, a bridge from Phase 3 into what would become Captain America 4, coming out, what, 2024, I think, or 2023? 2024. So, uh, people don't have to watch that right now. They can wait until maybe weeks before the movie comes out or even the day before the movie comes out to binge it. People have done that. People will do that. He goes on to say, I also wonder if this oversaturation might be partly to blame for the more mixed reception of Phase 4 so far. I think that's a very small part of it. I think the issue is that Phase 3 hit so many highs and there were so many great movies in Phase 3. Pretty much every movie in Phase 3 was a banger. Even some of the ones that people consider average, like Ant-Man and Wasp, that was fun. That was a fun film. And I feel like uh, Guardians of the Galaxy 2 ends up getting better and better the more times I watch it. So Phase 3 was damn near flawless. Phase 4, though, started slow. Black Widow and Eternals was kind of mid. Um, WandaVision didn't really stick landing in the finale. Loki was good, but I feel like a lot of folks were maybe expecting the momentum to continue, but Phase 4 was a rebuilding phase, and we're not going to get a phase like Phase 3 until maybe Phase 6, if they even can reach those levels. It's going to be really tough for Disney and Feige and Marvel to really top on Phase 3, because Phase 3 was just one great film after another, and it's very hard to maintain that momentum just because of the law of averages, the way numbers work. He goes on to say, both in terms of resources being too thinly spread, but also audience burnout. When it comes to resources, Disney has so much money and they make so much from the Marvel stuff that I don't think that's going to be a problem. I don't think resources will be an issue for Disney. I think they're going to do what they can um, and produce the most content they can to keep as many people hooked on Disney Plus as they can because that's their big sort of... Um, their big streaming service cash cow. However, when it comes to audience burnout, they have to understand that a lot of the audience that watches the MCU is also watching other things like Netflix shows, Amazon Prime shows, DC movies and shows, Star Wars, which they also produce. There's a lot of crossover. There is a lot of crossover. There aren't. There are very few people that just watch the MCU. In fact, I don't know anybody who just watches it. They usually watch other stuff too. So, you know, you got your Cobra Kai's and your Stranger Things. There's a lot of competition out there. So for them to put out this much content, yeah, I mean, I do think over time it does kind of bite them in the ass a little bit. And they also have to, I think, create a bit better of a... They need to create a bit more of a through line. Even though Feige did a great job during E3, not E3, uh, San Diego Comic-Con to explain where they're going, they should, in a movie or maybe in a Disney Plus special, show that. Have them explain where it's going. Not give away spoilers, but give a general direction, a map, so to speak, so that the fans can watch the content and keep up with it and not get confused and not get burnt out. Either way, there's a lot of stuff to keep track of. And how much of it's really important? That's a pick and choose thing with the audience. So that's what I have to say. Subscribe if you're new. Take care. See you soon.